Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about mm, kind of a broad topic, which is, you know, how things change over time and how history works and how historians work. And yeah, I mean, that's a pretty broad to topic, but we're going to get to, you know, more narrow topics. And as always, this is a video that is for writers. So I'm going to be looking at this through the lens of what would a fantasy or science fiction writer take from this for world building purposes? What can, can they take from this real world process to use for their world building? And we're going to look at this today through the lens of the gayness or lack thereof of uh, Achilles and Patroclus. So there is a sort of modern tendency in large parts of the, the queer community, which I am part of, you know, let's be real. I have, I am not an outsider to this, to say, oh, historians have been so unwilling to call things queer in the past and to say that these people might not have been straight in the past and that's still going on today and all historians are part of this process and, and obviously that is um, anti-intellectual and a little bit paranoid. Um, but it is true that during, you know, decades preceding this one, there has been a tendency among historians to not want to label things as queer, to try to come up with straight explanations. But there are plenty of queer historians who have challenged these readings and who are themselves doing good historical work um, and who themselves are accused of hiding the queerness of history. So why do I bring up the very obviously gay Patroclus and Achilles? Because it wasn't always very obviously gay. Now, we do know that it was considered very, very, very obviously gay, as in the, they were clearly lovers, to the Greeks in the 400s BC. In fact, we have records of Greeks basically shipping the two of them or arguing over who topped and who bottomed. Um, it was very clearly read as two lovers. But here's the thing. We know it was very clearly read in the 400s as two lovers. But these stories were written down around 800 BC, 400 years before that. And historians are much less clear as to whether it was read as a pair of lovers then. They won't say that it wasn't, but most historians aren't willing to say that it was. They don't know. And they're not willing to make a definitive statement on it because we don't know. And we don't really have a good way of knowing. And we really, really don't know if it was read as gay when the oral traditions that eventually became written down as the Iliad were first being formulated. I'm going to wait for them to stop barking. That's Pippa, by the way. Pippa's leading the charge because Pippa loves to bark. So... So we don't know whether it would have been read as gay in the Bronze Age, in the Greek Dark Ages, or in the uh, 800s uh, BC, BCE. But we know it was read as gay in the 400s BCE. Now, it's very, very proper to say to uh, any anti-gay historian who's going so far as to say, oh, it was clearly not gay ever. Uh, you know, it was never read as gay. And say, that's bullshit. We know it's bullshit. We have plenty of records calling that one bullshit. But it is not fair as modern queer people to say, oh, they're hiding the queerness of the story because they're not willing to say that it was necessarily read as gay um, prior to that. Because we can't say that the sexual politics of the 400s were the same as the 800s BC, or the same as the 1300s BC. Because like, if you look at the modern world, how much has our, have our sexual politics with regards to women and queerness and everything 
changed since the 1600s, or God forbid, since the Middle Ages. I mean, they've changed a lot, right? I hope we can all agree that they have changed a whole heckin' lot. And the way we read stories and the way we read relationships and the way we read uh, various social cues is wildly different. So what does this mean for writers? I'm sure, I sure know what it means for modern queer people. Um, cause like, in a, on a pop culture level, sure it's great to go Patroclus and Achilles were lovers. That is totally fair. Go for it. Go for it. Go for relationships that were not gay in the, in the text or not ever read as gay and we can, we're pretty sure they weren't read as gay. Read them as gay. Do it. Do it. Go for it. Um, that is, I am never going to call you a b bad for that. And I am not really going to call you bad for saying that XYZ historian has neglected a clear queer reading of this history, which is, you know, go for that. But what does it mean as far as writers? Well, it is really important for us to remember that periods that we section off as periods of time, like ancient Greece or classical Greece, might be very long periods of time that we are generalizing wildly about attitudes during a very long period of time and that there is change over that time. And to remember that societies and cultures change gradually, suddenly, uh, you know, they change. And if you are going to look back at the history of your world, you might want to consider how norms and very basic parts of life might have, might be wildly different even though that these, these groups might be considered to be the same culture and might see them, see these people as their ancestors and might regard this as their cultural patrimony. Uh, consider how things have changed over time, both politically, economically, but also just culturally. Just the basic cultural norms of a society can change over time and do change over time. So when writing fictional societies, keep that in mind and write that change over time. Write, even if you don't necessarily put it in the story, have it in your head that it has changed over time and write from that. And it will make your world building richer and deeper. And it will make people look at this world and think, ah, yes, there's a sense of history here. There's a sense of culture here. Things act like they do in the real world. It's not frozen in amber. It's not just this little, this little section of it that I see. I can feel that there is a world beyond this and a history beyond this and time that stretches out into the past beyond this. And that always makes a reading experience feel more rich and more interesting. So anyway, my name is Anna Fisher. Uh, lovely to see you here today. Social media links are in the description below. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please consider giving it a comment or a li like or even subscribing to my channel. Heck, do all three. Doing all three would be great. Um, I hope you had a lovely day today, and if it hasn't been lovely so far, I hope it gets better soon. Um, bye for now, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye!